Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in once again to our YouTube channel. What a great privilege it is for me to share with you the Word of the Lord. But uh, before we start, let's pray together. God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace, and we thank you for who you are. And God, I pray that we will be able to dream with you the dreams that you have over us, Lord. God, we know that you are love, and we know that you love us. And we just receive your love today in Jesus' name. You're a good Father. You take care of us. You have our best interests at heart. And I pray, Lord, that as we share your word, that we would be able to understand what you're saying to us, that we will have understanding and wisdom. I pray, God, for a spirit of revelation as we share, that we would know your heart and that we would know the plans you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so excited about this message, and the title of my message today is called Dream with God. Dream with God. I hope you know that God has a dream over your life, and that you are the dream in his heart and that God has plans for you. Now the scripture I want to start with is found in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 to 13. It's quite well known, but I think it would be good for us just to really look at it again and just to, just to hold it up um, before us and, and to really look into this to see what God is saying to us. And so in Jeremiah Chapter 29, verse 11 to 13, this is what the word of the Lord says. God says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. And then in verse 12, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Now this is quite a well-known scripture and I'm sure that you've read it before, must have heard it before. And uh, I, I just love the idea that God has a plan for me and God has a plan for you. And so the first sentence I want to look at or the first phrase is the phrase that says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And so you need to know this today, that God is in control. God is in control. He is sovereign in all of His ways. God knows all things, and He can do all things. And there's nothing that is impossible for Him. You see, God is the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And God knows the end from the beginning. And there's nothing outside of his control. God controls everything. He is in control of everything. All right? Does it mean that, that uh, God caused a, a, a drunk driver to kill somebody in a car accident? No. Because God also gave us a free will to make decisions. But ultimately, God is God. And he is in control. And he knows everything. He knows all things. And he can do all things. And we can put our trust in Him because He loves us and He cares for us. And so God is in control. Here's the second thing that we need to know when God says, For I have a plan for you, is that we need to know that God is working with a plan. God is working behind the scenes. It's, you know, in Romans 8, the Bible says that God causes all things to work together for the good, for those who love Him and are called according to His purposes. And so whatever is happening in your life today, please know that God is at work. God is causing all things to work together. Is God causing all things? No. But God causes all things to work together for the good. Because ultimately, God is in control and He loves us and we can put our trust in Him. <clears throat> and here's the third idea. Uh, when we read these words, uh, for, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Here's the third idea, is that you are the dream in the Father's heart. God has dreamt about you. God has planned out your whole life. And everything that He wants to do with you is the plans and the dreams that He has in His heart for you. You're not a mistake. God planned you. God made you. And He loves you. He is your creator. And you are His creation. 
You're not a mistake. God purposefully planned you and made you for such a time as now. Amen. And uh, here's the second part of this phrase where God says, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And I think I must read that again. God says, I've got plans to prosper you and not to harm you. And this is so crucially important. This is a, this is a foundation to us knowing God, that God wants to prosper us. God wants to bless us. He doesn't want to harm us. God loves us and He wants, he wants to give us favor. He wants to shine His face over us and give us favor and give us blessing. He says, I want to prosper you. So please know, child of God, that God is good. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is good. Amen. And God is for you. In Romans 8, the Bible says, God is for you. He's not against you. He is for you. He loves you. And here's the third idea that I, that I get from that phrase is that God wants to show the nations who He is. God wants to show His character, His ways, His nature. He wants to show this to the nations. He wants to reveal Himself to the world. And how will He do this? In Psalms 67, the Bible says that God will bless us. God will put favor on us, His children, so that the nations may know His ways. And so please receive the goodness of the Lord. Please receive His blessings. It's not to enrich you. It's so that the world can see that you have a good Father. You have a Heavenly Father who loves you. Amen. Uh, the uh, next part to the scripture says that God has plans to give you a hope and a future. So first of all, God has a plan for you. The plan is to prosper you, not to harm you. And then the plan is to give you a hope and a future. So don't lose hope. It's easy to lose hope. And, and when you feel hopeless, you feel overwhelmed. But God is saying today, don't lose hope. I have a plan, says the Lord. Don't lose hope. Put your trust in God. He is worthy of our trust. He will never disappoint us. He will never hurt us. He will never fail us. You can put your trust in Him. Don't lean on your own understanding, but put your trust in the Lord. And here's the third idea. Surrender your plans and dreams to God. You see, as, as I was preparing this message, I, I prayed and I said, God, what do you want me to share with your people? And I just got the idea, got the impression that some of us might have stopped dreaming. Some of us might have stopped planning for the future, feeling hopeless, feeling that this, this is a really tough time and, and you don't feel like dreaming. You, you don't feel like you have any ambitions. But God is saying, you can dream. Dream with Him. Dream the dreams that He has and align your plans with, he, with His plans. Surrender, <laughs> surrender your plans and dreams to God. Put it in God's hands. What, what the, the desires that God placed in you is from Him. But seek first His kingdom. Seek God's desires and He will fulfill your desires. Amen. And then um, here's the part where we stop reading. So we, we, we really like to read verse 11. But we never really re read verse 12 and 13 as much. And, and I really believe that verse 12 and 13 is, is equally as important as verse 11. In fact, I believe it's, it's, really, it's the key to really connecting to verse 11 is to read verse 12 and 13 and to apply it and to do it. And then we will know the plans that God has for us. Let's read from verse 12. Verse 12 says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Alright? So first of all, God says he's got a plan. There's a dream. Now God says, I want to show you the dream. I want to show you the plan. But you need to come to me. You need to call to me. You need to pray to me. And I will come to you. I will listen to you, says the Lord. So here's what we need to do. We need to ask God what His dream is for your life. 
Ask the Lord what his dream is. Ask the Lord what his plan is for your life. What is the assignment that God has placed on your life? Ask him and he will tell you. He will show it to you. But you must ask. You must pray and say, God, show me the dreams that you have for me so that I can live in the fullness of everything that you wanted for me. Amen. So ask him. And number two, enjoy a relationship with him. So all of this, all of God's plans and that he wants to reveal to you is all in a context of this beautiful, intimate relationship that you can have with God through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died on a cross. That's why he was raised back to life so that you can be in a relationship with your heavenly father. You can be his son and his, or his daughter and he can be your heavenly father because Jesus is the way to the father. And so enjoy a relationship with him. And then here's, here's a third idea. Ask him, ask him what his plan is. Ask him what his dream is. And walk in this. Walk with God in this process. It's a journey. It's a lifelong journey of walking out the plan. Walking out the dream that he has for you. Every day, purposed and planned, that God has dreamed over your life. Walk with God enjoy God in the plan in the dream and so here's the final part of us it's verse 13 it says you will seek me you see there it is you will seek me and then God says and find me so when we seek the Lord we will find him he's not hard to find it's not difficult to find the Lord he makes it easy for us to find him but we need to seek him and we will find him and God says, find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So let's seek the Lord with all of our hearts, not halfway. Let's not serve the Lord halfway. Let's not serve, the, serve God with a lukewarm attitude. But let's say, God, I'm committed to you 100% in the same way that you were committed to me when you died on the cross. There was no half measures, but you went all out and you finished everything that needed to be finished so that I can be free, that I can be saved, that I can be redeemed. God, with that kind of dedication, with that kind of commitment, I commit myself 100% to you, to seek you with all of my heart. Amen. So when we seek God, we will find him. And let's seek him with all of our hearts. So here's what we need to do. Spend time with God. Make sure that you're spending time with God. Spend time with devotions. Close the door behind you. And, and take an allocated time in the day. And just you and God. Just spend time in His presence. All right? Engage His Word. Engage His Spirit. And develop a healthy prayer life. Make sure that you have a healthy prayer life. It doesn't mean that you're praying hours and hours and hours a day. It just means that you are praying throughout the day. The whole time you have, you're in an attitude of prayer connected to your Heavenly Father. And it's good if you want to pray for hours. Some people pray like that. Um, but I, I find that as I go through my day, I just keep on praying, keep on praying in tongues, keep on connecting to my Father, keep on praying over everything I'm doing, and the whole time connected to my Heavenly Father, walking with Him. And so here's a, here's a, a really, really nice scripture I just want to read to you. Um, so it's in Proverbs 25, verse 2, and this is what the Bible says. It's the New King James Version. The Bible says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings to reach or to, to search out a matter. Let me read it again. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search out a matter. And so um, um, somebody once said it like this. God doesn't hide things from us, but he hides things for us. Because it's exciting. God is hiding things for us to find. Not hiding things from us that we will never be able to find it. But it's an invitation. God saying, come closer to me. Come closer to my heart. There are so many things I want to show you. I want to show you the plans I have for you. I want to show you the dreams I have for you. But you need to come close. And I will show it to you. It's, it's, my, it's my glory to conceal these things. It's your glory to discover them. To search them out. Amen. So here's my final thought for today. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's in Psalms 139, verse 13 and 18. And I just want to read this over you. 
uh, Psalm 139, verse 13 to 18, in the New, in the new International versions, Version. <clears throat> For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know them full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. You see, all your days were ordained by God. God planned all of your days. Isn't that amazing? He planned all of your days. And God has many thoughts over you. More than, more than the sands of, of the sea, God has thoughts over your life. It's impossible to count the thoughts that God has for you. And I want to tell you something today, child of God. Every single thought that God has for you is good. It's to prosper you. It's not to harm you. It's to bless you. It's to hold you close to His heart and to love you. Because that is who He is. Amen. Let's pray together. God, we thank You for this amazing word. That You love us so much. That You've ordained all of our days, Lord. You've numbered them. Thank you, God, that you're in control and I surrender my life into your hands right now in Jesus' name. And I know that you love me and I know that I can walk with you in an intimate relationship every day in a fresh way. I pray, God, that you would help me to dream with you, that I may dream the dreams that you have with me, that you have for me, and that I may be able to walk them out in the fullness of everything that you've planned for me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you folks for, for tuning in. Shalom. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my dream Till I met you Till I
rescue My sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the end Of the Lord, I'm 
everybody thanks so much for watching our video i hope it was a blessing to you if you liked it please give it a big thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed and would like to please hit the subscribe button down below hit the bell button if you want to be notified every time we post a video and if you'd like to communicate with us please feel free to leave a comment down below have a blessed day